Well, unfortunately, with AMD and NVIDIA's lower-end GPUs, such as the 7600, the 4060, and the 4060 Ti, they only have an eight-lane PCIe um, connector uh, express uh, versus the 16 lanes that you would get with the higher-end ones. Like all the other GPUs that they have, 7700 XT, 7800 XT, 4070, 4070 Ti, all those actually have 16 PCIe lanes. So for the most part, that isn't a big issue if you're running Gen 4 uh, PCIe with your CPU and motherboard, because that way you get access to the full uh, two gigabits per second per lane. But if you're running a Gen 3, uh, that bandwidth is in half down to one gigabit per second. So instead of having 16 gigabits per second in total, you only have eight. So there could be the potential for a bottleneck there. And unfortunately, some of AMD's newer CPUs like the 5500, 5600, and 5600G, sorry, and the 5700G, those are based on a different architecture than the rest of their uh, 5000 series CPUs, and they only operate at Gen 3 speeds, unfortunately. So there could be the potential for bottleneck there. Um, I mean, if you have older CPUs or motherboards, you might only have access to up to Gen 3 as well. So in this video, I have the Asus Dual Radeon RX 7600 that I'm going to be testing out at Gen 3 and Gen 4 speeds to see if there is any sort of bottleneck there. And what I'll be using is, it's all going to be done on the same system. I have a 7900X, which is Gen 4. Um, and the motherboard is a Gigabyte Aorus uh, 7, or it is the X670 or it's the X670 or Elite, and I'm just going to go into the BIOS and turn the 16 uh, lane uh, PCI Express slot down to Gen 3 speeds. So you can do that within your BIOS, so that way we're keeping everything even and we're just adjusting uh, the speed of those PCI Express lanes. So let's get into it and test out uh, some games and see the results. So a few of the games that I selected all have uh, internal benchmarks. That way I can keep everything consistent. Um, trying to test out with, say, Fortnite or Modern Warfare, like Warzone and Modern Warfare 2. Um, those games, you just won't get a consistent um, read because depending on where you drop, how long the game goes, all that stuff will definitely affect the performance that you're going to see. So using the in-game benchmarks, everything is consistent. And I use several newer games and a couple older games just to kind of give an idea of how it's going to perform across the board. So starting off with Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p and 1440p, as you can tell, there is a little bit difference of performance. Uh, Gen 4 definitely goes a little bit fast, like you get a few extra FPS on the average, uh, 93 versus 89. And on the one percent low of 75 versus 71 so we are talking like a four to five percent difference there which in my mind that's not that big of a deal um a little bit of a bottleneck but not enough to be discouraged from getting the card same at 1440p we're seeing an fps of 79 versus 74 and 65 versus 59 so we're seeing about the same kind of drop four or five fps um down but the, it's not going to affect the performance of your game by losing four fps on to Cyberpunk 2077. Again, it's another newer game. This one's been updated recently, and we're seeing practically no change at all. And the uh, the average, we're off by one. That's probably just margin of error from running the uh, uh, the benchmark. And on the one percent low, we're down uh, 66 versus 63. So we lose three FPS. Not a huge deal. You're not going to notice that. At 1440p, again, we lose one FPS going from Gen 4 to Gen 3 on uh, the average, and we lost two at the 1% low. So not huge a difference uh, in this game. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this came out a few years ago as well. Um, again, as you see a trend in the newer games, there's practically no difference between Gen 4 and Gen 3. At 1080p, we lost three FPS. Uh, for average, and 1% low is down by 2. Not a big difference. You would not notice any of that. And 1440p, it's exactly bang on for the average. And the 1% low is only off by 2. 
So, so far, we're not seeing a huge difference. What I would be interested to see is how the 4060 Ti uh, works out at Gen 3 speeds because it is more powerful than the 7600. So the CPU would have to work harder to keep up with it. And I'd be curious to see if that uh, would have an impact. Hopefully I can get my hands on one of those sometime soon. Ghost Recon Breakpoint again came out a few years ago. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit of a bigger gap here um, for the 1% low or sorry, on the average we're talking for that's not too big of a deal. But when you get to the 1% low, we're starting to see six FPS difference at 1080p. And it's kind of like a recurrent story when we get to the 1440p as well. We're going from 99 now to 93, so we lost six FPS there. And then on the 1% low, we're losing almost 10. So for this game, we're starting to see uh, a little bit more of an impact, especially at the 1% low. But again, you're not going to notice a huge difference here. Everything is still really high. Uh, we're talking 5 to 10% difference. Now, Far Cry 5, here's one where, um, again, we're not seeing, I guess, not very much. Uh, it looked like a bigger gap when <laughs> comparing the 1080p to the 14, or 1440p, but we have at 1080p, it's almost the same. We're off by one FPS, and the 1% low, we're off by two. You're not going to notice that. And at 1440p, it's bang on with the average, and the 1% low is off by one. Not a big difference. And moving on to Shadow of Tomb Raider, uh, again, pretty much the same results, but there is some gaps on the 1% low. So at, on the average at 1080p, we only lost two FPS, but when you look at the 1% low, we're almost off by nine. And at 1440p, we're down four FPS on average and eight at the 1% low. So again, uh, bigger gaps, it seems to be that this impacts the 1% low more than anything else, but we're not seeing huge uh, gaps in performance there. Yeah, based on these results, there's nothing here that would lead me to believe to say, no, you shouldn't get that. You're going to have too much of a bottleneck if you're running at Gen 3. That does not seem to be the case here where you might in, end up seeing like any kind of impact is if you have a bottleneck on the CPU uh, to begin with by not having a powerful enough, like say if you're using like a 2600X or something like that. These are fairly high frame rates at 1080p, so you might be in bottleneck by the CPU, not by the interface, the PCIe 8 lanes at Gen 3. So if you do feel like you might be impacted by Gen 3 or you're just not comfortable with it, you could always just go up uh, a level with your GPU. Like I said, last gen 3070, 3070 Ti above this current gen 4070 and above and for AMD like the 6700, 7700s and above all have the full 16 uh, lane uh, PCIe Express. With that, you will have a lot more bandwidth um, instead of only have like the, those GPUs are only slightly more powerful. Uh, so you're not going to be bottlenecked um, from that regard because you're going to go from having only eight gigabit per second at Gen 3 up to 16 gigabit per second, but you're not doubling uh, the amount of power that those GPUs uh, are going to have that will need to talk with your CPU. So by going up the extra level, you access the full set of 16 PCIe lanes at Gen 3, and you have a lot more bandwidth there. So there there are options, but if it's within your budget, 7600, um, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't appear to have that much of an impact uh, if you're running Gen 3 PCIe versus Gen 4. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Have a good one.